is Dota 2 balanced? An ironic question for me to be asking while I have my game showing Sven with an Agnum Scepter going around supermanning the heck out of every hero he finds. But today I will try to make the case and say that yes, Dota 2 is more balanced than it has been in a very long time. Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Navitz representing my esports team, the Sploosh Troop, and this balanced discussion today is brought to you on behalf of Gamers Class. All right, let me begin this discussion by saying no, I do not think that a game with 115 heroes can ever be perfectly balanced. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying this game is perfectly balanced. What I am saying though, is that we are in a really good state and this is a really good patch in terms of balance and in terms of not having any uber broken heroes. Sven, what I showed you earlier was probably one of the most, is probably one of the most annoying things to deal with. The other thing I'll state, and that's gonna be uh, demonstrated by showing the hero with the highest win percentage in the lower brackets. So if we take a look at Underlord, Underlord's win percentage is 58% in our Crusader and lower. Let our Archon is 59%. That's a, that's a really high win percentage. Going up to uh, 57, then down, or sorry, down to 57, down to 55, and then down to 53%. Underlord isn't a hero that we would consider a significant game breaker or a threat or someone that's just a broken hero to play. So while he does have a really high win percentage in lower brackets, it doesn't translate that far into the Archon or into the Divine and Immortal bracket. And this is what I wanted to bring up. The idea that you can't balance for all skill levels. And this is something that's impossible to do, in my opinion. It's a discussion I used to have a lot in um, when I used to play StarCraft 2. Guy used to tell me, StarCraft's imbalanced because if you're lower level, then you just can't beat Zergs for whatever and whatever reason. And I used to tell him, if you can hit your timings a little bit faster, you'll be able to take care of that problem. And he's like well it's just not reasonable that if he gets to this item and blah blah, blah. it's it's different at different skill levels is what i'm pointing out so what we're going to look at today is the win percentages and the pick percentages in the divine and immortal bracket which i think is really telling of how balanced the game is at the moment in terms of who the most meta heroes are uh who the most picked meta heroes are and what their win rates are so if we look at the top we've got tiny at 50.18 percent we've got second win runner at 48 percent third rubik a very fun and popular hero to play down at 57 percent and then somehow faceless void even with his nerfs is up to still up at four, uh, 52 percent so very high on faceless void uh, and then we're still around like 50% for most of the heroes. We see, I think the highest hero uh, in our top list that's visible here is the Marana at 54%. And I think that might be because of how good Moonlight Shadow is uh, at the moment, but I'm not I'm not positive on why Marana is doing so great in the meta. I'm not, I'm not positive on that. But if we look at just the, the win percentages and the heroes, it is not insane. Even our boy Sven here, who gets picked quite a bit, 14.55%, uh, it's no 25% tiny, but it's still a pretty good percent in terms of getting picked up. There are ways to deal with Sven. There are things you can do. There are timings you can hit. There are pushes that you can make. There's pressure that you can apply. There's all kinds of different, different gameplays and different styles that are viable at the moment and i think that's really good for the game i understand a lot of people are tired of the patch and that being tired of the patch and being a little frustrated that you don't have new strategies to try out and new heroes to play is understandable but the game itself is in a really good state balance wise now let's switch up our view a little bit and look at the heroes with the highest win percentage. So this is where uh, where Dota has done exceptionally well in limiting these kind of cheese slash nuance picks that can show up in your drafts or just like heroes that 
a select group of people are able to play really well and win at a super high percentage of them. I'm thinking of heroes like Meepo, heroes like Lycan, heroes like Visage. These kind of heroes have typically had 59 to 55% win rates. And we see here that some of the heroes with the lowest pick percentages, even though uh, with low pick percentages, even though they still have really high win rates, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to try to justify why and that's usually because these kind of heroes uh, like the brood mother well maybe not all of them but some of these heroes like your meepo like your brood mother like your visage um is lycan still in this list yeah he's still kind of up here at 52 these kind of heroes with these very low uh, pick percentages are good in uh in specific draft scenarios and some players are really good at, at using these heroes. So if you've got a if you've got a certain person who knows how to micro really well and has had a ton of games on these heroes, they might still be able to win a high majority of their, their games, but they're not being picked up a lot. So the highest win percentage heroes are being picked the least with the exception of uh of marana and, and bloodseeker here so bloodseeker maybe he's not being picked up that much i think because he's actually had such a big change that not a lot of people are used to playing the new new bloodseeker or played played him much but that, that's just the that's just the theory but we don't see any of this crazy visage at 60 percent win rate with like a three percent pick rate basically there was like there was a period of time where you could have a certain amount of heroes that were just really really overpowered if you got them into the right draft and a lot of that has to do with our changes to drafting as well like you have the new draft order the 2-2-2-2 two, 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 and then 1-1 one, one at the end which is pretty cool i think that's done a lot of good uh we've had the we have the new banning system which is which seems to be helping a little bit uh i do like the game diversity the more the the difference in not having the same heroes as we, as opposed to prior patches before we had banning we have a lot of a lot of different types of drafts and lineups that are showing them sometimes we have early game drafts sometimes we have late game strategies with like your specters and stuff like that but we don't have uh we don't have these single heroes that get picked up by like one or two people every game because they can't they get banned a lot and then we don't see like these these nuanced picks having these crazy high win percentages at like their their 60 percent win rates or anything like that anymore and i think that's a really good sign so i have tried to make my case for dota being relatively balanced providing a little bit of statistics and my own anecdotal evidence which is only worth my experience basically you guys can think about that however you'd like but i'm gonna pose a question now should it stay this way should it stay relatively balanced or should ice frog blow it up and my opinion is in in my opinion and what will definitely happen is ice frog will blow it up there will be some crazy game changing things that happen if not in the next patch in a future patch that are going to completely throw the whole game's balance out of flux and there will be some heroes who are overpowered for a small period of time basically the way that dota patches works is our major patches give us major changes to either items heroes or the map and then after that what we do or what ice frog tends to do is nerf so he won't nerf in a he won't nerf very much in a major patch like when he changes up all of the heroes you're not going to see a lot of nerfs coming out to try to rebalance someone because there's so many changes that you don't know how their old balance is going to play out so what he does is make the changes waits a little bit and then makes adjustments so uh it, it's a it's a really good strategy and it does the same thing with the map and he does the same thing with the items and that's what we'll see in the next big patch that blows up or that comes out but while that happens it throws the game into a state of more unbalanced like we'll see maybe the new hero will come out and it'll be crazy broken like monkey king or void spirit was or maybe it'll be super underpowered who knows uh whatever happens it's going to be very interesting but i also think it's going to be very good for the game sometimes it's better to experiment and try new things out for a little bit even at the cost of the balance of the game in terms in trade as a trade and as a trade-off you'll get a better game in the long run and you'll keep your fan base more engaged and entertained in uh over a longer period of time
Thank you all for watching. I would love to know what your thoughts are on the balance of the game. Is Sven too much for you to deal with? Are you mad about something? Or do you think it's kind of okay? Are you just craving the new patch? Uh, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, one love. One love. <laughs>